folks welcome back to the morocco channel this is talented morocco live worldwide live with a super guest and um you know i'm a fan of hers um she is doing the work out there she's awesome she's gonna bring some guidance some whole new perspectives on how things happen in this world in the business world so folks you know uh without any further ado i have with me uh spiritual business coach amel dahmani uh amel welcome to the show thank you so much Ethan. thank you very much <laughs> uh, it, it's a it's a pleasure and honor uh and uh you know so so as always amel uh, let's talk about you first your background because you do have uh, an interesting background now again this is the morocco channel now of course we are uh live uh on a different you know uh platforms as well different channels so people from all, all around the world are going to be watching this and uh you know what you do is worldwide ultimately but we also want to you know uh, give some nuggets to our you know youth in morocco i mean obviously this is the talented morocco and now you are you know someone that i would uh qualify as super talented <laughs> personally you know mm -hmm. for the work you do and, and the background that you have so but but let's bring that background to our audiences today Okay, so uh, to give you a bit more of where I'm from, I'm French Moroccan and uh, my background is in international finance. Then I created my first business in London, loved it, specialized in leadership and sales, uh, very exciting. And then leveling up, I got to meet more and more business owners and I shifted into the spiritual space where I got to marry that spiritual thinking and focusing on the being and performance. So, and then I got the chance to just explore it as well with clients. Their results goes, it, your clients' results are your degree. Let's just like say it as well this way. Um, if you're like, oh, I'm not from a, a, a master degree or whatever, it's who you are that shifts everyone around. So it is at heart of Taqwan Wealth, which is the name of my business now. And it's about securing the ripple effect that you are. So that is core to how we are serving way bigger than just this business, because we are part of something way bigger as well. And I'm excited actually to be here today. Thank you, Ishan. Well, well, I am, I am as well. And, and just, just to, to, I mean, it's an interesting because the way you, you said you are French Moroccan, so you are of Moroccan background, but you are, I guess, from France, but also you've lived in England and so you have a British accent, <laughs> you know, so, so it's a kind of interesting, you know, combo that you have there. You have a, a multi-flavor, you know, piece there and your education is in, uh, I mean, business leadership, that kind of thing. And, and so that's, that's another thing. I mean, business leadership, that's powerful stuff. And, uh, but you took it upon yourself to, to study own. Uh, journey as a coach specifically in the business world but you have given it a different twist with with the spiritual concept so and, and by the way I, you know let's define it because for the most you know part i have not heard of a spiritual business person i think okay. i might have had one show that where someone was a coach and in, in and using some spiritual approach to it you know but but not in the context of of let's say islam or 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 in the moroccan you know context if you want to call it that yeah. one. so let's yeah. talk about that for a minute so I have been asked this question, why are you not calling yourself a Muslim business coach? Because I do uh, practice Tajweed al Quran Karim for my clients, uh, the clients that are Muslim business owners, the Muslim entrepreneurs of this world. And it is an option that is an add-on that is gifted for me. Um, and I said spiritual because you said it so well, like I'm French Moroccan, I speak French, Arabic, Spanish and English. And those Hello. are different languages. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> these are different languages, right? So if I am speaking to a Spanish speaking person that doesn't speak English, we can speak about the same thing. They will not understand me, but we are still speaking about the same thing. If I'm talking about this glass, right? I'm talking about it in English. Someone else is talking about it in Spanish. We don't speak the same language. We have the sensation that we are literally not talking about the same thing. Spiritual is the same. Islam in, is the language that is the closest to my heart and it touches me in my heart and everywhere in my being, in every like literally every single cell of my body. And it goes beyond, it's beyond just the physical body. And you might have a different language, but we are still talking about this higher energy. We are still talking about that there is some, something bigger 
than just me and I'm made of it. We talk about the same thing. This is why I actually said spiritual. And it does not matter if you do have the exact same language than me or not. The vision of taqwa and wealth is to awaken wealth consciousness in this world. I do have a particular appetence, a particular thing for women and for al-ummah that doesn't stop me from serving on a higher space because bigger, it doesn't matter which language you speak. <laughs> bigger, we are a soul. This well, that's, the, that, that's a pretty interesting uh, way of looking at it because, because first of all, I, I love what you said because there is a difference between religion and spirituality, although spirituality is part of religion, right? And you're right. When we talk spirituality, we talk in the, the realm of spirit, spirit stuff, you know, which is like more deep, you know, thoughts and energy, but without going into the actual borders of the, the predefined religion systems and, uh, or religious systems. And that's, that's a, a different, you know, spend and, and it's better because it, causes less i would say conflict and uh, people get sensitive when we talk religion uh you know who are you are you a scholar did you get the education that you need you know what makes you qualified all that stuff goes away because you're not really crossing over to that line you know the, the line of of the religion itself itself the jurisprudence and things like that you're more in the realm of just like how it affects you in your spirit and your presence and your energy and vibes and and frankly i mean um, so i relate to you obviously i'm muslim too and uh in the Morocco channel, I think 99% of people are going to be watching, they're going to be Muslims. But of course, in other channels, they'll be from different religions around the world. And this does not make a difference because the spirituality part is across. And I think we all, anyone, whether they believe in, in a higher being or not, I think they all have a little bit of a uh, a feeling or a need of some sort of higher presence. And even when they say, I don't believe in something, uh, they do have a spiritual, you know, part of their life and and i've actually had asked that question before like you know yeah. to people who says well i don't believe in a particular religion but i be believe in spirituality which means they do understand there is a power they do understand there is an actual um in in influence that is happening around them you know somehow yeah. uh, energies frequencies vibes and all the stuff that affect them on a day-to-day -day basis and their yeah. you know they live in but they don't name it they don't give it an actual attribute something that is you know defining it you know as we would say in 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 prime religions right so yeah. so i love that and in in you know i love the name taqwa you know right and and oh. what was that what was the second part taqwa and wealth taqwa and wealth i mean you know so so taqwa obviously righteousness being piety you know that kind of thing and wealth we all know what that is now, again, for those people that are not familiar with the word taqwa, is really just being righteous and being correct and honorable and honest and all the stuff. But taqwa is like the highest level of righteousness. The way I read taqwa, to be honest, Hisham, this is why I named it this way, is God consciousness. So there is an understanding of consciousness and movement. We are simple consciousness and movement. So in the way I serve, I serve on different levels of consciousness. So the number the how much money you're generating doesn't really define you. So it's not really how I read my clients. And on this matrix, it will give an idea of where they are at, you know? So spiritual business coach, it's ma my major skill is business coaching. I serve business owners that literally struggle in their relationship with money. So I help them heal their relationship with money so they make a lot more. And at the same time, the second reason why my clients come to me is for peace to activate more peace because you are bound to make more money when you put the right actions in place. So strategy is important. The thing is, what is important is how you are experiencing it. Because I met people that are very wealthy and emotionally poor. They are spiritually bankrupt, right? So those are the clients on a higher income earning space that come to me, right? And the idea is to meet who they are. So they have this moment just for themselves and they get to meet themselves and really put it out because anything in your system anger for example let's give a specific example anger needs to find a way out and when you're leading a business and whether it is a multi six-figure multi-million business you will need a place where you can literally unleash all of that and that it gets to be transmuted so you can experience more peace leading your business to the next level
Now, this is this is core. This is intimate moment with the business owner, with them in their being. So there is being, doing and having. Strategy is a lot more about doing, right? Having is the result. I work a lot in like before that in the being part. So this is also why the concept of spiritual business coaching can feel like out of reach sometimes. Like, what does it mean? What do you do in these coaching sessions? It is so bespoke and tailored to their soul and their own growth that there are so many scenarios that are possible. The main two reasons is I want to heal my relationship with money because I'm struggling with it. And I want more peace leading my businesses to the next step. Oh, no, that, 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 oh, that, that, that's that's excellent and actually there's a lot in there i mean you, you know we can unpack that for two hours right yeah. <laughs> but, well, well, well the first thing is uh, i love I, you, you clearly stated this is a business coaching model where you discuss strategy and everything and you get these clients who are making money right and who are what, whatever stage level they are in the business and again for our young audiences or our business people in morocco you know or around the world in, in for that matter uh you know if you can combine the spiritual, you know, part with your regular business part, I think that that makes it healthier because you can have a healthier balance within the spirit. Because here's the thing: I, I mean, I'm I'm in business too. I've been in the corporate world. I can tell you, yeah. it takes a toll on you. It doesn't matter if you're working for someone, or you, especially when you run your own business. It's even harder because, you know, it takes most of your time. Uh, sometimes it, it it only depends of your religious practices. It can be on the depends of your attitude, your anger, <laughs> anger management can be part of that. Uh, yeah. The stress level is high. Uh, yeah. The blessings sometimes you're just into the worldly stuff and you forget your spiritual speed. You know, speed there as well. So there's a lot of you know things that can happen. Yes. And you know, uh, we get caught up. You know, and there's another part. I mean, when you're sometimes you get greedy i'm not i'm not calling it by the way there's nothing wrong with that but we want more and more and more and then you forget about you and then therefore it becomes a little bit more affecting your concept so so I, I, your approach is is cool because it can bring someone from that like i'm going just for the money to like i'm going for the money but i'm still going to be me and keep that balance correctly yes. i mean being balanced in everything actually i mean moderation uh, especially in i mean uh, i would just go into the concept of islam and and pretty much on on major religions moderation is a key we don't want extreme one way or the other we want in the middle and the middle happens if you're aware and uh you know to be aware you need sometimes someone to help you be aware i mean we do have you know our you know at least teachings you know where if you have always you know god present with you you're always gonna yeah. be and you start with bismillah you start with in the name of god you start with like you know a prayer whatever it is whatever you do it kind of gets blessed and so 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 that taqwa piece comes from there and i love what you say is high it's like really being higher you know uh you uh and 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 being connected with the almighty and uh and then, and there is that. I mean, at the end of the day, um, in our culture, at least in in the Moroccan culture or, or in the Islamic culture, um, and I think even most of the religions will agree, and cultures will have some similar, whereby that we, the more you're closer to God, the more things are happening for you. And and most people would agree to that. And I, obviously, I didn't say all. Oh, some people say, oh, I, I am successful. I don't know of anything you know, of that nature. But that's another story. But we're talking about how you feel when you're connected, you know, with your higher powers and, and really having that relationship. So, so, so here's the thing. Now, you mentioned people who have businesses and things, and you mentioned multi billion, you know, multi, you know, six, you know, seven figures, you know, type of, of entrepreneurs. But, but how does that relate? Like someone comes to you right now. How do you, you know, uh, select your clients and how do you work with them? I mean, you know, that's that's a question that's intriguing because if someone right now says, "Well, I am a business person. I'd like to to speak to ML and 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 figure out what what would should they expect from you?" So, um, one of the reasons how I would select my clients, one of the points is is their demand clear. This is so important. Oh my goodness, I love this. <laughs> is their uh, demand clear? I get this on Zooms as well. I love it <laughs> on WhatsApp. It happens. <laughs> so yeah, is is the demand clear? Because one of the, um, the the things like if you're coming to your business coach saying, "Oh, once I buy myself this services, then everything will be better," you are not taking on your power. You are like giving it away. So sovereignty is a piece that is important to me because codependency is a no go for me as a business owner. I would not serve clients that are in codependency. 
Um, so to answer your questions, how do you select your clients? The first thing is, are they sovereign in their decision making? You know, it is so important in the coaching industry. So if there is other coaches watching us today, uh, this is important Probably. because a person that is not sovereign and is buying your services and buying, buying, buying yours or any other person's services just to feed themselves, right? But not taking decision and not holding their power um, is a nightmare of a client. <laughs> just so you know, you get to learn this on the way. Um, so it's important because I, I insist on this on purpose, to be honest, Hisham, because there is also coaches that would take on clients. And I had this experience as well, because it looks perfect on paper, but trust your inner compass. Trust your inner compass. And also clients that come to me, there are very often already buyers. It's like, when they come to me, they already bought my services. When they came to me, it's like they had few questions, but my voice is my lead magnet. So they would hear me on videos. They would, uh, the biggest point is recommendation. So they know someone that got results. They're like, okay, she did this. My first client, it was a woman and her husband saw the results. He was like, I want this as well for me. Like, I can't recognize my my wife. She's like, she just super powered herself. What is happening? <laughs> and he goes, I want the same for me. I want to experience this as well, right? Or with business associates, for example, they would start to work with me. I'm thinking about one in Belgium. And that's the same thing. It goes like, what happened? You have conversations and on the powerhouse, like the, the biggest offer with me, you get access to me literally on your phone. I'm a message away or a call away. This is the VIP plus plus option, right? And that gets to shift it because what is happening is identity shifts. You identity shift to your next level. It works in your being. So there is no magic super uh, secret recipe that you didn't have. I have so many, I'm like a, like a, a massive library and there are so many books in there and I do not deliver all the books to each client the same way it's like some client needs few of those books some clients don't you know some clients don't need to know the methodology they just want you to apply it that's the same thing right and I have been doing that for 10 years literally like you you get to learn on the road the other thing is that I'm coached as well a coach without a coach is a red flag my friends <laughs> so get <laughs> understand how your coach is, is supported so i would look at how my client has been supported before you know and the third thing would be um how determined they are to really shift because some people need pain in order to change truly what they're experiencing and sometimes they want to change, but because in their mechanisms, they are not at the end of like how pain, how much pain they could take. It's still less painful to stay in that situation than to really change. So I will caliber how important it is for my client to change. And what is their system? Is in their system this thing where I need to go really when I have like no other door, then I change? Or are they actually clients that understand the ego, death, and things like this and get to shift before? Where are they at? So I gave I gave answers that are a bit deeper than the usual answer that we, we get from a coach, Hisham, you know, to go a bit deeper because I want this to serve other people out there, coaches or people that are thinking, okay, I'm I'm building my business and having clients. Your clients hire you, but you also hire them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yes, well, actually, and I'm from the recruitment industry as well. I had a life as a recruiter, so I think it comes uh, from there as well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, I can relate to that. Well, so no, there's a lot of things there. And I, I'm going to start with the first thing that you mentioned is that the clients have to be sovereign. They have to have the authority, the ability to to have a leadership you know, role. I mean, not just buying the service to learn, but to be able to apply and and share that value with, with their, you know, I guess, constituents or, you know, uh, I guess, downstream with online and in the business world. Uh, and that's important because, again, you can have a business, but you, you know, you can get a coaching, you can get all the stuff, but if you're not able to apply it correctly, that's, that's a challenge, right? I think yeah. that's where, and you said, you know, you said it, you know, action, right? You said that you have to do the doing part. 
I think a lot of people struggle with the doing part. Everybody, I mean, we can all, and you mentioned strategy. Strategy is awesome. You can plan, yeah. you can have a strategy, but all the strategies in the world can be whatever they might be if you're not putting them to play, if they're not being taken in on the road and, yeah. and executed on the proper way, you know, they don't mean anything. All the strategies can be yeah. just basically plans and on the paper. Be, to be honest on this, Hisham, you touched a point because um, some clients come to me with, I don't know. I know what to do. I know what I need to do. Or they had a strategist, but they don't know why they're not activating it. And that is so important because we dive into their peace system. Is there not in peace? If you want to get to 20K a month, 30K a month, 50K a month, and you don't feel safe with that money, or you feel like you are, I had this one, so I'm going to share it right there. Yeah. I felt like I was not part of my family anymore. I would not be loved by my family anymore. If I'm making too much money, I'm at the outside of the clan. And the root, the two roots every time is to not be loved, forgetting that we are love itself. And the second thing is to not be enough. This shows back so many times. But if you say, uh, this is important in marketing, right? If you say, this is what I'm serving you, people are going to be like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, I don't know how she can really serve me because you buy on what you want. Let's say I'm a fitness coach. I shared it already before. Let's say you were a fitness coach and what I want as your client is to look super, super good for my wedding day, for my honeymoon. That's what I want, right? This is right there what I want. This makes me click. This makes me buy. I want this. You know, as a fitness coach that I will need all of this to get there. But if you market on all of this, I cannot connect to you, <laughs> right? So this is also why I'm telling you, I market myself slightly differently, which means that the level of consciousness of my clients need to be at a certain degree to be able to buy from me. Otherwise, it would feel like far from them, but they can still feel what I'm saying because they are soul. Right? So this is important. If you're a coach, you know that they need all of this. But talk about this. That's exactly but, what I'm doing. Yeah, well, it, take, it takes a lot of expertise to get to that point to understand, you know, where you know the people are and how you can get them there. But again, it it this is the work that you do, and this is where people sometimes may get it wrong is that they think they can do it on their own, and they they can do it. I mean, but they sometimes we all need guidance. And I love what you said. I mean, first of all, that's being humble yourself by stating that every coach needs a coach. We all need to learn. We all need to have mentors and, 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 uh, people that actually kind of oversee some of the stuff. I listen, I do have my own mentors as well. And I, I refer to them every now and then I always ask and I always, you know, you can't, I mean, we're not an expert in everything. You know, we always need to learn. We always have to continue learning. And, yeah. and by the way, again, especially for our youth in Morocco and, and I, I guess around the world, you know, learning, is something that you don't stop you know don't ever think that you've already reached the top because there's no top there's always going to be someone that's better and there's more learning to be done and there's always new discoveries and things that we can you know apply even in the context of religion you know uh, you know yes. we might have uh, you know a book that's been 1400 years in, in existence uh, and a guidance that comes with it but that guidance is still being discovered on a day-to-day -day basis and you have scholars that come up with new explanations of how things apply to the current moments so there's more of that but in the business world by the way uh, that's another thing i want to touch because you are a spiritual business coach in 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 the islamic you know culture business is part of religion religion has yeah. a play in actual our business how you deal with people how you honor, yes. you know, you know, the transactions, how you are righteous in, in your dealings with people, not cheating, not lying, not overpricing, right. not doing, there's so much stuff. We, so we can talk in a, in a minute, but I want to touch on a couple of things you mentioned besides the fact that I, I love what you said about the coaching needs coaches. And, you know, that's a red flag if you don't, because, you know, I, I, that's one. The other one, you talked about results a couple of times and, you know, whether through the explanation and you actually physically stated the word results, results, you know, everything, you know, you have a plan, you have an idea, you have a strategy, then you have to execute and ultimately you want to see the results. I love what you said that some people may sometimes, you know, have all that, but then they feel that they lost their friends, they lost their family, they're not belonging. As you said, I know I'm not, I'm not enough. I'm not in part of the, you have these things. So, so sometimes those are the things that people 
uh, need to be balanced, basically, because they kind of like, you know, go on one side, they're lopsided, and obviously they can trip. So you want to get them back in line. So that's awesome. The other part, I love what you said, is that you're not a, you know, uh, a cookie cutter. You're not just doing one template for everybody. You tailor stuff and, and you know, which is true. Not everybody is made the same way. Everybody's got different things. And sometimes you just need a little tweak and tune up. Uh, sometimes you need a whole part to be changed, right? <laughs> so you have different things. And uh, it's understanding a good, a great coach will actually identify. And by the way, I, I've been in sales and that's exactly what we do. You know, we identify a person's needs and stuff. And, you know, not all needs are equal. Not everybody's, you know, we can all want to buy the same thing, but the reasons we want to buy that thing may be yeah. different from one to the other. Yeah. So we need to be able to identify what that is and then hopefully guide them towards why this can help. Sometimes it doesn't even work for them because they, they might not even know what they want, really. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they want something that is not even like, is this really yeah. what you want? I'm like, oh, why? now that you say it that way, you know, not, not really. This is what I want. If you ask them the question, like, why do you want this? Like, oh, I don't know. I mean, and, and, and you're like, Oh, okay. Well, let's let's yeah. talk about it. <laughs> let's deep yeah. dive in there. You know? <laughs> I but, I mean, it's true, right? That's how, that's how it yeah. works. I mean, it, it's amazing how it is. And by the way, I love the other part that you said about you being a recruiter, uh, because it, and again, I, I've I've recruited thousands of people over the years in, in my capacity as a leader in sales. And uh, one thing that is, and even me as an employee, right? You know, before I got into the business, I've always been on and off business, but, but, you know, whether in the business side or the corporate side, there's one thing. And by the way, again, this will apply to everybody that's out there. Uh, I say this, and you just stated it equally, is that you are always interviewing others as well as you being interviewed. So whether you're looking for a candidate or you are a candidate, you don't have to select a company or a business just because you need the job. You need to be able to have a good fit. I mean, we have the saying that we hear all the time, people quit managers, uh, yeah. not companies. That's exactly right. But, but companies just as important. You don't want to work for the wrong company. And you don't want it, to, it's it's, in, in, it's impossible to work for a company that you're not going to see eye to eye with and stuff because you're not going to deliver. It's going to be chaotic. And so it, you have, it's just a way through. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It it, it really depends, Hichem. You know, um, there is a point where I, I actually disagree there because how can I express it? If, okay, I'm going to use it like in my business and how it translates, right? When I'm also recruiting my clients and they're also recruiting me, hiring on both sides. If you're struggling to pay rent, my services are going to feel really far. And that moment you are, so... My services on the Maslow hierarchy, right? The La Pyramide de Maslow. You get the first needs, like this part. Those are vital stuff that you need. Clothes, home, eating, right? This is what you need to function. If you are not there, what I'm talking about will feel far. It will feel far. It will feel out of reach, right? And in that level... Get a job, even if you're not, oh, la, la, in love with the vision of the business and incredibly fulfilled <laughs> and all of that, right? Get well, the no, job and yeah. get it moving, right? Yeah. Because you want to <laughs> get out of that first step of the Maslow pyramid, right? So you can level up. The, the At the higher levels of that pyramid, you have this idea of, I want to give back to the world. I want to share to the world. I want to secure that ripple effect that I am to be able to serve even bigger, right? And then you understand that every move you make, every movement, every thought you have, even like beyond matter, does impact this world. But if I cannot eat even pasta at night, I, I don't have space for that. So I would I would say at this, like if you are there, it's absolutely fine. I was there as well. If you are there, the what would be important to do is to muscle up the getting out of scarcity muscle. Well, so right? I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you. I, I, I'm okay. not just, actually, okay, I, I, no, 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 I'm with you. What I was saying is more like, you know, you obviously we want people to, to be comf comfortable, right? With what they're doing. But you're right. If you have a desperation, you have a need, you know, I mean, it. but then again, it will be temporary for you using them as much as yeah. they use you. That's yeah, so, it. You yeah, said it so, so well. It is temporary. Yeah. It is temporary. And like those hardship are cultivating the winds for you. I've been you. there too, <laughs> by the way. Well, voilà, voilà. So, <laughs> but I'm saying that because um, I, I got uh, not triggered, but I, I got like uh, this, this thing showed up about uh, getting in my mind, Hisham, where I was listening to a podcast when I was like 
18, 19. And I was just starting and listening randomly, right, to videos on YouTube. And I felt like it was not for me because it was like, oh, if you're not truly in, invested in this, etc. So I remember going like, oh, they're not talking about me. Like, <laughs> I this touched is on that I one. That way. Yes, this is why I reacted <laughs> that way. I could, well, no, like, no, I mean, by the way, no, by the way, you are perfect because, because here's the thing. I mean, ultimately, that discussion is a, a bigger discussion. But, but when you said that we both interviewing, it's a two way street. You know, you, yes. it's like, it's like a relationship, right? You don't, you yes. don't just pick the first person you meet because, like, you know, yes. they look good. You want to make sure that it is compatible. Same thing as business. Yes. But if you must do what you must do, you got to do what you got to do. Nobody's yeah. going to stop. And you, I love what you said. When you're on that that bottom feed and you have to survive. See, survival instincts, survival skills, you know, come with strategy as well. And sometimes you need a bridge, you know. And by the way, the recruiters sometimes also, listen, I've had candidates that I'm looking at their resume and I'm like, this is overqualified. What would you want to be here? Well, I'm looking for an opportunity. I just need to. I know that it's temporary. So now you make a decision. Do I need just as well a temporary phase to get these people in? Uh, yes. They need the, they need me. I need them. We'll just have this little, you know, temporary phase. Or yes. no, no, no. You know what? I need someone more permanent. That's a decision yes. as you. That's what uh, business is about. A win-win. You're, we're finding the win-win all the time. That's the game. Huh? Right? Well, 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 again, <laughs> we, we're aligned, baby. Listen, I, mean, I told you, like, you, you, you know, when we spoke, I mean, it's the same. And and but okay. but I love the this the. By the way, that th you you I love what you said. Like you know, I disagree because you you looked at it from that angle. But but you're right. Uh, it's the concept that it's, you know, there's different ways to look at things, right? It's not only one way. And and anybody, someone could be watching right now is like, well, I have a different way from the two of you right now. <laughs> you know, I believe in this. But here's the thing. There's no wrong way. It's just a different way of doing things. Now, the different way means a different path. A different path can take a longer or shorter distance to whatever you want. Yes. So it, it's all that. But if you don't know, you seek guidance. We have yes. them out. You know, so 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 I'm out. Now let's talk about really like let's get into that spiritual piece of yeah. the balance because you know again in our world now again as this is a a, a Moroccan you know channel uh, main broadcast the some of the Moroccans you know say well how do I you know co connect my my religious beliefs with my business you know we do have the we do have those boundaries already set for us that's the that's the sweet part you know maybe in the west is different because you have a mixture of religions and beliefs and stuff so you know sometimes corners are cut and different by the way this is happening in morocco too i mean we got corners left behind in all business aspects of life you know we're so far away from the religious practices in the business world i mean people cheat people listen you know how many times i got you know taken for a ride in in in, in businesses or investments in morocco i could tell you stories you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I uh, you know they they promise you the world they don't deliver. You know that's not how it is. But if you are a business owner, if you are someone who actually wants to thrive, um, you can thrive better if you have the healthy balance of your spiritual realm, right? And so, so let's guide us through that that experience, Emma. Spiritual is an accelerator. This means that is the same with um, with coaches when you are hiring a coach. You are actually buying yourself time. You are accelerating your process because rather than, um, let's say you go through a hardship and a business trauma and you get stuck there and you can stay in that like stay in that roundabout for so long without knowing how to make that emotion circulate. All right. I work on two things, the emotional intelligence and the spiritual intelligence. So let's say there is an issue, a problem, something that is like, a, like, a, that is like, uh, oh, that is good luck. That is a, a knot. Not a knot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have like a knot going on. And what we get to do is look at it and understand how it formed itself. So we can literally just unknot it. Or the another way to see it is like watches, right? The watch has like a spirit, like a particular system like this, and it goes one in another, right? And sometimes like it goes like this on the watch, right? And sometimes you have like a, I like to call it le, le sable, it's like sand. You have just a little bit of sun in there, getting it stuck and like blocking for a second. What we do is we zoom on that, right? And we get to know why it is serving you because you created that to serve you. You created that to protect you. You created that to make sure you're safe. You are the owner of this. This is why I make sure there are sovereign clients because then we can go there 
And we don't spend hours and hours going like, but why me? But why me? But why me? Right? It's like, I did this. I created this to help me. I am serving. Yes. So this is the emotional intelligence part. This hardship exists to give me tools to literally skyrocket my next level. So this is gifts. And God means gifts of the divine, by the way. (laughs) So you actually are gifted at every single heartbeat in your business journey as well. So I put emotional intelligence and the idea is to give the tools to the person that I like my client so they can use that in their next hardship on their own. And what we get to do is regulate the nervous system through it all. Whether you believe like me in Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, being the almighty and the, our unique source, whether you call it something else, we understand that we are served this like pieces of sand to help us through And this is divinely guided. This is why I say what you do when you actually gift yourself services in Taqwa and Wealth and with me is you buy yourself time because then we get the sand pieces out and it goes like so much faster. It's like a chrono. If you know a little bit of like like watches, I went to an event, the Prévost, um, La Joaillerie Prévost. The, um, it's, uh, oh, how wow. do you say? Yeah. I can't remember like, how you say like, it. Like, Jewelry. Um, jewelry, yeah. yeah like boutique of jewelry, uh, and it's named Prévost. Uh, I think it's, um, je sais plus qui c'est. Uh, like clock watches, you know, watches design and yeah. manufacturing, okay? Yes, it was in like uh, Emilie in Paris. Uh, and um, you know this actress that has this massive smile in Prada? Le Diable oh. s'habille en Prada, elle s'appelle comment? What was her name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know the name now. <laughs> It's, it's fine. If you know her, she's Légérie de la Marque Prévost. And uh, so That's I went... Okay. Yeah, uh, you can... with, like, Go ahead, good. <laughs> we're, we're playing like a guess. <laughs> a guess, so, you're like, yeah. literally this. <laughs> yeah, I went to... So my point is like, I went to an event like this in Bordeaux uh, last week. And you get to see how the watch is made. And this is why I'm actually speaking like this with those images. Because this is what inspired me at that moment. And there, I was literally having a conversation with the person in bank and insurances and all of that part. And when they was like, spiritual business coach, but okay, I know what business coach is. I know what business is. I know what the strategies are. I know that I need to do. I know that I need to fail. I know that, like, I know the drill, but spiritual, what what does that mean? I told you, that, and- that throws everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> And so I was having a conversation with him and I was like watching on this watch and they had this um, uh, miroir, this uh, mirror thing that could show us how it has been done. And it's like, it's it's leur favorite. It's, it's, and this is where the link happens as well with, I call it Allah Azza wa Jal once again, you can call it whatever you want. My point is that there is a harmony that is beyond what my brain can comprehend, understand, see, hear. It goes way beyond that. And the frequency comes first every single time. And the practice or Tajweel Quran Karim is for me the highest frequency, which is illumination. And it goes beyond words. This is why I add it to sessions with my Muslim business owners as a gift an additional gift for them because it gets to open and close the session on the verse of their choice. And this is unique on the market. I'm aware of it. Now I want to make the link, Hisham, with my background being French Moroccan. The reason why I said it is because growing up in France, it's almost either your your religion or like your faith or your studies or your skill set or and I'm taking this very personally because this is my life so (laughs) and I know I'm not the only woman out there and it's escalating and I do not like to shush myself uh this means that (laughs) I love it (laughs) we are power I know I'm not the only one that was whispering that for so many years before being able to actually speak up about it once you get the skill set and you know you're safe and you can rely on yourself and it goes beyond you're helped at every single heartbeat in the journey you are not afraid to actually speak your truth. <laughs> and I want to touch this as it's important. The more you speak your truth, the more you sell, particularly if you're a solopreneur. And the more you speak your truth, the higher ticket you get to sell. 
it's so important to understand that, right? Because LinkedIn launched it, like literally LinkedIn shared that last week, that the brand is more important than the product itself. It's the same game, right? So I can I can talk about so many things in there, but my point is my background has also found an expression of itself in my business where I was like, okay, I want to marry both because I decided I can. And the link with that is the only permission you need is yours every single time. <laughs> and we are made of the divine. You know, um, so, I can talk about No, no, I, I love <laughs> it. And, you know, it's amazing <laughs> because you've touched on, on a few things and and you're right. You know, it's it's you literally talked about the intricate pieces that make, you know, how we do things. Right. And, you know, you're right. There's, there's powers that most people are like, we don't understand what's going on. Well, that's because the higher being, because God and Allah SWT is giving us a different, you know, spin. There's always controls that are beyond us. And there are things that are meant. And there are things that sometimes they're so finite that we don't understand why, why it happens, how it happens. I mean, even in a non-Muslim, you know, uh, concept, I mean, it's the same concept. They, they, It's the same belief that we just call it, as you said, different things. But really, they say, yeah. oh, God works in miracle ways and, and you know, and, uh, you know, mysterious ways rather. So it, it is exactly that. But because we don't understand all of it, we we can get the feeling. We know that something happened that is unique and like, what yeah. the hell is going on? You know, yeah it's happening but you know i don't even know why but i feel this energy i feel this and it's happening but but by the way you know i also enjoy what you said about your background because um it gives you that personality that that mixture of things and you have your identity and you also clearly stated and something that actually is there to me in the sales world uh and by the way this actually goes from that background because it's funny you said that you know your brand precedes your your products uh, which means your person, the truthfulness about yourself, how honorable you are, makes who you are. And if people trust you, then the rest is history. You'll get more. I mean, and that's why we in the business world, I mean, referrals are or word of mouth is the best thing, because if you're yeah. bad, your reputation precedes you. If you're good, it precedes you. So the results are going to be based on that. But here's the thing. This is in the spiritual realm or the religious realm. It's historic because the world, I mean, we have what 1.7 billion, you know, Muslims around the world. Well, initially, some of these merchants went all over the world. They just they did business. They were business people going all around the world. And the reason yeah. people kind of appreciate them because they were honest, they didn't lie, they didn't cheat. They yeah. they were they were who they were. Can you and they talk were, about uh Hisham, I allow myself to literally to say it now while you're please. saying this. I'm sorry to cut you. No, no, um, it's all good. It's your show. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's so important because money is also the ethic of money and how money is circulating. It's not about the amount of money you have. It's about the circulation of money. When you are into wealth, you do understand, for example, that debt is not the enemy. And what happens is that religiously, we get an understanding of what debt is and we get an ethic that is delivered to us. So there is an energetics around money. Money is a simple energy and movement. Money doesn't even exist. Once again, if you were yeah. in the first step of the Maslow pyramid, you're like, what the beep is she talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> but like since what, 90, I think 77, I can't remember the date, but like the money doesn't have the equivalent in gold. That's so money gone. doesn't exist what you're fighting for what you're running after doesn't even exist and debt or amazing debt or tax free money but you need to financially educate yourself to get there and i want to talk particularly to moroccans around the world i know it's not moroccans just moroccans watching this but like to people around that are also muslim or hand have an understanding of the ethics of money all right the money that is circulating, what you have in your hand can be either a blessing or a curse, depending on your safety part and the intention you have for money. All right. It is a simple energy and movement. It is gifted to us to serve higher. And if you are obsessed by those two things, you are poor, you're literally bound to stay poor. You're poor. I'm saying that with lots of kindness. <laughs> I know I'm a bit harsh right there. But if you're focusing on just literally spending the money or saving it, you will have a poor life style as well. It's just like the understanding is how this money is circulating. 
And understanding that money gets to multiply itself. Money makes money. But guess what? It's the same with your character. If you are a, a bubble of anger, you will multiply that all around you as a ripple effect. You are in charge and responsible of literally cleansing this energy and movement. And this is why we do have practices. In Tajweed al-Quran Karim, it's fascinating. The reading is the same if you go to, I don't know, meditations in Tibet. You find that the, the times of saying, for example, um, uh, or um, you find that they are freaking similar. Once again, we're talking about the same cup, whatever angle you choose to take right? So understanding that money is an energy and movement. And what is more important than energy is your ability to connect on the right frequency for it. So you can have at this moment, no matter what hardship gets into your way, you will see it as a blessing and you get to experience life, the same freaking situation, right? That you did a year ago, but you get to experience it with so much more peace. You are anchored in a different space. This is what our practice gives us. Prayer is not a random time. Those are energetic windows that are here to protect us. We are, as Muslims, we are literally un peuple de rituel. We have rituals day in, day out. We say, Bismillah. For every single thing, I want to say, like if you want to get out, yeah. you have a dua. Yes, you you have a dua for everything, literally. So we do have an understanding that there is this physical realm and there is a spiritual realm. We do have an understanding that we are supported. We do have an understanding that there are things we cannot see with our human eyes. And we are given a toolkit to actually help us cleanse and protect who we are our soul so whatever you want to connect to this however you want to do your cleansing or however is resonating in your language for your human experience right mine is islam in my human experience it touches my heart and every single cell of my body and you can have a different one but i understand that money is an energy and movement What is important is how you make that money circulating. I excel at helping money circulators. Love it. Well, 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 yeah, well, 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 that's that sounds that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it just it's just so philosophical. It's, it's it's like wow. <laughs> it sounds like a brand name by its own. <laughs> but but you know, ML. Here, here's the thing. You, you really yeah. talked on on the ethics part, right? And you know, in in the way we operate, at least in the Muslim world, right? You know, in the Islamic traditions, uh, in business practices, um, and that's the thing. In Islam, there is a practice for everything, uh, and and you know, there is no. It's always in parallel. There is no. We can't do something without the religious piece of it being already there, designed for us. And uh, you're right; those rituals are there, you know, for a reason. And even people that are not religious, they do them anyways, you know, by default because they've learned them all along and they just practice yeah. them without even understanding what it means. But if you understand what it means, it makes a whole different approach to things. Because in essence, it is part of our daily. To, to you know, when I when you work at business, first of all, you know that you. I love what you said. It's the money is going to be either a blessing or a curse, uh, and we, we'd rather be it. You know, a blessing than a curse. Because obviously, if it's a curse, it's a problem. Your life's going to be not really happy. Because yeah, you. I mean, we know this for a fact. We have people who have plenty of money, yes. but their lives are miserable. We have people that have little of it and their lives and stuff. Now, if we can enrich that 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 uh, money level while keeping that beautiful you know lifestyle with that, great. And and you can do that if if you don't cheat people, if you're honorable, if you practice correctly, if you have those anchor moments as like spiritual you know daily retreats. We call them prayers, whatever you want. Yes. You know, you have all these things you know that kind of you know anchor you to your belief and keep you straight, as opposed to you don't you know. You know, in business, we want to cheat, right? Sometimes, I mean, it, it's funny, right? You know, I, I make it sound like this, but because oh, I want to make more, I can do cut corners. But when you have the right foundations or footings for your, you know, foundation for your, you know, practical stuff, your spiritual stuff, you're aligned. You're not going to cross the line because you want to make a couple of bucks. What you want to do is do it correctly because you do expect more blessings to happen by doing the right thing, and doing the right thing is a common sense world you know world known factor yes. anyone around the world i don't care religious or not yes. religious you got to do the right thing by people 
it comes back. We know we the word karma. America going on. That's yeah, yeah, very yeah. American. <laughs> well, yeah, we we, <laughs> we know, listen. so many times in Chicago. Like, do the right thing. It's about do doing it. the right thing. Do yeah. the right thing. <laughs> well, karma is uh, is is a, a big word, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, karma, yeah. karma really gets back. Well, karma in our spiritual mode here will be justice, divine justice. And, yeah. you know, you do not want to get on the bad side of that one because yeah. you get kicked um, <laughs> badly. If we go higher, Hisham, genuinely, if we go even higher, mm. it's not just a blessing or curse. It's always a blessing. So what I mean by this is yeah. like we go like even when you went like, let's say I have healing is not about suppressing what is so-called not the right thing to do. Healing is about showering with love the things that you believe are unlovable about you so important uh, to kick that in all right yep. it's so important to understand repeat it, it for our audience <laughs> one more time <laughs> yes healing is about welcoming and sharing with love all the things that you believe are unlovable about you so at this level what you understand is that it's not about suppressing the behavior you have that is so-called not the right thing it's about looking at why do you behave that way because you are doing this to help you you're not doing this to hurt another person in front of you. And if you want to hurt another person, that comes from something you are cultivating in the garden you are. You did plant the seed at some point and you did decide to believe that at some point, right? And this is key to literally dive into those places. This is why I'm telling you, like the one-on-ones I deliver, because I serve only a one-on-one, are very intimate and it goes deeper, you know, it's a non-judgment place so we can listen to the silence. Listen to what is happening within you, which means the ripple effect of that is that your business aggro himself, literally. We're getting the little Sundays out. We're getting to cleanse it. So the send have no point of being there anymore. You're not triggered in order to have that behavior anymore. So that what we can call in the duality, if we stay in duality, that curse is actually serving us to ascend, right? So this is why I'm like, it's so important. If you're thinking to yourself, I do have the be that behavior. I am not enough. I'm not there enough. It's all about uh, identity shifting. I'm not that woman that I want to be yet. I'm not that man that I want to be yet. I shall wake up at five and go for a run and do all of that. Understand. And, and I shared a video about this. I had a friend of mine loaded and she goes, Amel, I actually love and envy the place you're at now because I was way happier when I was building it. And like the excitement, because I do say I'm excited all the time because I am. <laughs> like sometimes I just Nothing get wrong like with that. <laughs> bubble of energy and I'm like, wow, oh, I love this, right? And I she love goes, it. The energy is really uh, unbelievable. I mean, I, I'm i like, <laughs> you're in France, uh, and, you know, and I'm feeling it. So that's that's how, how powerful it is. <laughs> it feels like that joy you're having is inspiring me. So if you are generating a lot more, actually cultivating joy would be important for you. <laughs> and she was like, this moment where you're building and excited and doing before actually getting to that level where I thought I wanted to be in order to be happy. So what we get to look at is what do you want to feel? Because that feeling, you can cultivate it in the now. The only thing that exists is now. <laughs> Time is an invention of the mind. So now is how you can cultivate feeling that. And when we go to our prayer and the rakain and we put our head on that mat, the prayer mat, we are in that moment. And that's the only one that exists. And you get to literally let everything that is triggering you to the divine. And that's a whole new world. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we, with well, this exactly. So, so that's the thing. Like our practices are connected to to our you know routine rituals, right? And 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 they are meant to keep us in that moment to keep us adjusted and aligned correctly you know because because yeah. the world will try to deviate you a little bit like you know so between fajr and door you start like going a little trash, like yeah, to this. it's actually helping us every single time exactly because, you get pulled right back like yes if you look at it like let's say there is a line here right mm -hmm. and this is the positive things and negative things i like to give that example because when i heard it the first time i was like aha that's uh -huh. it 
<laughs> I, I love it. I can see that. I can see the picture right now. Go for it. <laughs> so you get the positive things that happen to your life. And this is all joy and excited. And I'm so happy. Okay. And the negative stuff, you get a fine. Uh, someone in your team is changing. And I don't know, you get a tax you didn't see coming. Boom, she showed up. All right. The so-called negative stuff. Life does this to us because we are called to go back to the center. In center, you have gratitude. So you can cultivate the center, gratitude, love, and calmness every single day. You can go back mechanically to those levels. So for my clients, for example, that are non-Muslims or they don't feel that, what we talk about, and I can see some of them anchoring themselves that way, is literally going in nature, walking through nature, feeling and seeing what is way bigger than them. They just connect in a different way. Right. And I have this like it's important to be respectful. Once again, I grew up in France. I'm French Moroccan. And in France, the let's just say the, the people around me were not Muslims at some places. So I learned and I muscled up without even knowing that it was a skill, by the way, <laughs> that accepting the other one for who he is just simply as he is, not trying to shift it, not trying to say, you're wrong. Let me tell you. OK, d'accord. <laughs> <laughs> that was a skill on its own. That was a skill on its own. I got triggered in other places to anchor that and develop that. But my point here in your experience of ascending and getting better, right? And disciplining yourself to better. There is a part of this that is really important on that journey is accepting. Accepting where you are at in the now. Because if you keep hurting yourself, saying you're not enough there, or thinking that was something I had, thinking to myself, oh, Mel, if I go like this for a second, if I lean for a second, and I'm like, oh, I'm accepting who I am and where I'm at. I thought that was me being super lazy, not performing enough. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I was like, no, girl, you better get this shit right. And I was like, almost like not mean to myself, but the compassion piece wasn't there. Let's just call it that way. I would discipline myself. And then I learned how to discipline myself through the midst of chaos. I learned how to find peace through the midst of chaos and not waiting for the chaos to stop in order to feel finally fine, right? So this is so important. You're a business owner. You're going through one of the hardest paths of your life as a business owner. You get to learn. You get to meet yourself. You can have an amazing strategy in place, like in place, in plus, <laughs> both languages showed oh. up. <laughs> you can have an amazing strategy in place and amazing clients and amazing business and amazing systems that will reach a certain level. When you get to work on the energetics of your business and who you are, that multiplies itself and it skyrockets to the next level. Because you already know how to work through matter, it becomes so it becomes so simple. So often they're looking on how do I shift outside of matter? This is why spiritual shows up. Yeah. That's that's some deep stuff. I mean, we we're gonna need a whole new session just for that. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, but but it's it's. I mean, for for our audiences right now, I mean, yes. you you've cleared it. I mean, across. I mean, I love what you said about you know you even in the non-muslim spirit world right you know in yeah. terms of like you know when i mean i'm i'm in the u.s you're in france and so we we don't necessarily interact always with you know uh, uh, i guess muslims you know of practical you know uh, religion stuff we in business we have a majority that may not be it doesn't matter to us because our rules are very clear you know we can operate in all realms it doesn't matter we still have to be the same we still have to be you know anchored we still have to have the foundations and we still have to be mindful of everybody around us and that's our teachings actually uh i mean we we don't have to go like you're wrong you're right because again we already know that there is no no person in religion we have to be able to be open we can interact with everybody and that's really what the beauty of our you know business practice uh, you know uh because you're not only working uh with people because of the business you know and you want to gain from them you also always are worried about you know your higher spirit you never want to go down to a different level you want to keep your 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 moment up there you want to be always mindful that you know your actions will have repercussions <laughs> here and then <laughs> you know that's one yeah. thing you know that's one and the other thing is we have to also uh be you know you said a keyword earlier intentions all our intentions everything i mean our, our first you know I guess practice practical teaching uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is is very simple. 
all actions, you know, are based on intentions, right? And to, yes. to, to, to you know, so so we yes. have to have the right intention no matter what. This this show has a good intention in 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 the onset of it. Every single thing we do, if your mission is got wrong intention, the rest of it is gonna be all bad stuff. The right I love intention how you easy. said mindful, Hisham, because when you said that earlier, before you talked about intention, I wanted to tell you, oh, I have another word for this because I replaced mindful. Oh, go for it, go for it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, Emel, you keep cutting him. Let him speak. I no, 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 no. It's your show. I, I mean, I just want to give some some of my little, you know, things there, but, but it's all yours. <laughs> No, I appreciate it because then you talked about intention and it was completely aligned. I replaced the word mindful by heartful. Hey, I'll take you know? it. <laughs> well, actually, so, the I'm heart like, is the brain, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. So, and they like the heart have its own cells. So the idea is to literally align and be in the same um, rhythm, shall we call it, right? <laughs> it is. It has to be in sync. And, and, yes. and again, but this is, it's almost a higher level of being. And understanding yet it is it is for everyone it is achie achievable and attainable for everyone it is yeah. not a but guys this is not rocket science it's a lot more simpler than you think you yes. know uh, it's a simple practice that if you do it enough you'll be able to to gain more be better yeah. and 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 results will just be like they're like what the hell is going on i mean yeah. obviously you got to take work by the way and i love what you said you have to do the steps and you have like you said you you have a friend who actually loved when she was doing as opposed to the yeah. you know you your momentum never stops you got to keep doing and in in the way we operate we have to always want to do more and more and more and by the way when we did that as a as a nation or, or or as a group of people over the history you know there was so much power in that i mean today's yeah. i mean whether we like to hear this or not folks you know a lot of the all the scientists will tell you Thank you, folks, because you've done a lot of that foundation business for science, medicine, you know, astronomy, all the stuff that that we use today. There's there's a history. You know, it's funny if you go to Disney, right? There's Epcot. There's that big bowl that that's an Epcot Center, right? Epcot Center is is World War. Uh, Epcot, which is the uh, Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. That's the the acronym, and that's actually one of the Disney parks. And there is that nice um, Earth, you know, looking sphere. And when you walk in there, I mean, it's a, a ride. It gets you through it, and it tells you, it takes you through the history and the ages of 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 you know, like progress. And there is a phase there where the Islamic culture had flourished, and that's really based on the teachings that you're talking about today. That's actually the spiritual part that actually guided the business practices and the learning practices and the yeah. given practices that gave some, at the time, there was no Renaissance in Europe. I mean, it was the Dark Ages. And a lot of that knowledge was given to Europeans who took it upon. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, we didn't keep up with it <laughs> overall as a, as a culture, as a, as a group. And then obviously that went away. But the fact of the matter, that's actually still existing within our practices. Unfortunately, it we just don't do it. Itself. Yeah, exactly. It multiplied itself beyond what is the citizenship of the people, multiplying it because we are one. And that oneness is so important to remember as well. And the other thing I want to share is that when you get to, if you're thinking to yourself, how do I use this on my daily basis? What, what can I get away with this? Like, what is my takeaway from those conversations? Because those conversations can last for hours. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And the ripple effect of it is so bigger. And what I would say is that there is something really simple. And I keep saying it as much as I can. And it's practicing gratitude. We have shukr and dhikr in our Muslim practice, but you don't need to be Muslim to know this, all right? So practicing gratitude is going to help you because your brain doesn't care. Because once again, it's simple. Your brain doesn't care what is true or not. Your brain cares about what you tell it is true. So it's so important here to remember that when you're cultivating gratitude every single day, your brain doesn't know how to do two things at the same time as well. So if it's focused on the positive before sleeping, right before sleeping, or in the morning, you're opening your eyes, you are actually helping mechanically your entire body to shift. To shift, what does that mean? That means that the path emotionally you're taking day in, day out is shifting. And it's like Waze or your GPS, right? When you always go to the same place, it goes like, is that home? <laughs> right? It's the same place. <laughs> because your internal system can understand what is the path you're using the most now and shifting it. This is what you're doing. Sorry. This is what you're doing. 
All right. So when people ask me, what do you do in those sessions? We look at what are the new paths that want to be designed. This is, I don't care about the story of my client with all the love because story is very human 3D mindset thing. It's very linked to dunya, dunya, dunya only. I go higher than that. I look at the pattern you're using. Which pattern do you want to create in your life to experience the next level? When the first step here is to be responsible of it, own it. Ownership means ownership, okay? Own it. I love it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, I swear I got this. <laughs> so the question I'm going to use that one. <laughs> yeah, go for it. It's, it's an emana. It's meant to multiply itself. Every video I make, every moment I go online, it literally to connect and serve. You get to be very intentional with your thought and your words as well. And it's an emana. Emana means gift, a blessing. You get to share it. I don't know, two years down the line, someone meets this video and that can be the equivalent of me three years ago. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I would love, honestly, and we talked about this before going on air. I was like, I want to be able to meet the women I wanted to meet when I started. And be like, what? There are other Moroccans out there. What? There are other women doing this. What are they other French Moroccans out there owning up where they are from, honoring their ancestors and also not saying no to everything new that is coming? I'm literally hybrid. And I wanted to meet someone like me and other women that can be like, yes, it's possible. How do you do that? By being it. This is why the ripple effect of the being you are is so important. This is why it is so linked to the vision of Taqwa and Wealth. Because it's bigger than me, Amal Dahmani. It's bigger than uh, my business, Taqwa and Wealth. It's bigger than this vision, right? It's about awakening wealth consciousness in this world and more. If you are taking your gratitude book, writing every day on it five things you're grateful for if in one of those like me i did i won 10k plus per month i was always adding a plus always because you can have more you can be more and means literally being allowing yourself to receive more and the container for it you can hold it because one of the limiting beliefs that i had about money concerning myself and i know other people can share that is that if i had all this money how do I do? Like, I cannot handle this money. I don't know how to, what, what do I do this money? I'm not financially literate about it. But investing riba, haram, halal, and I would be like, oh my goodness, closing it all because of fear. There is two doors in life, love or fear. And when I choose fear, because I have in my life as well before, I do not bully myself. That is a massive difference between success and not successful. It's so important because it's not about judging. It's about being able to honor your path, welcome it. So yes, thrive for more and keep going and learning. And at the same time, get to accept. It goes beyond the duality of just good and bad. It goes beyond the duality of it's enough, it's not enough. It's way bigger than this. So the reason why people hire me, Hisham, is because when they hear me on videos or on live or things like that, they're like, okay, I want to work with her. And sometimes they're like, I wait a second, I need to figure out what is my demand with this woman. But like, <laughs> there is so many things that get triggered in those conversations. And what they do is literally start the conversation with me because I'm, I do it in a very conversational way. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> well, it's, it's your person. I mean, I, listen, we, we have in this, I mean, this is not my first discussion with you and, and it's just your personality. It's, you have that, that drive the moment. Plus you have the knowledge and skills behind it that, that and, and, and all the expertise. I mean, between all the, the things that you enumerate in, in the onset of the show, like, you know, your background, your, your learning, your culture, all that makes who you are. And, and certainly I love what, you know, your current mission or your existing mission really is that you want to give that ripple effect. You want to give this to more people and, 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 it, and you give it back because that's how you felt years back, you know, that you wanted to be that next woman. Like you wanted to get, so you're doing exactly. And by the way, that's the same thing with me. That's the same thing with a lot of people that want to give yes. something is because I just want to do the thing. Like sometimes like, you know, I wish I had some of this information, you know, a, a while back. Right. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't readily available the way it is today. I mean, really, let's just, yes. you know, 
I mean, in the 90s, you would have to go to the library to actually get some some information, right? And in the 80s, forget about it. I mean, you're younger than that. But, but for me, that's where we got information. You have to travel to the library and spend there, you know, in silence, you know, reading a couple of books. I need to know what you can't say, hey, Siri, or you can't say, Google, give me those chat GPT. I need the, you know, information on yeah. this. And it just come up readily. You got to go know what to look for, look for it, find it, learn it and come back. And it's in a, in a format that is not audio, which means you have to actually really take notes and stuff. Now it's different. I mean, you watch a show, you gain so much momentum in very little time and you can replay it while you're driving, while you're in the kitchen, while you're, whatever, you can be sleeping and yeah. listening to this, right? It's a whole different world of, of information. And so you and I, and many of, of people out there and all these, these fabulous coaches out there that are working. Yes. I mean, listen, these are businesses, you know, people are making money, but here's the thing. That's a, that's in itself, something to, to learn from folks is that who says that we cannot make money by helping others? As a matter of fact, one of my, my rules is like, we can help ourselves by helping others. And that's exactly what we do. We help a lot more people. When you have that vision and that mission, you can do more because it's it's going to come back to you in, in, in multiple ways. But the, the idea is that you are given the world. I mean, we have to give a legacy. Knowledge is not meant to be kept. It's to be given. You know. Yes. All the resources that we have, you know, what's the point? I mean, we're going to die one day. That's a guarantee. And, you know, it's going to go with you to the grave. And then it becomes part of your deeds and whatever your outcomes and then hereafter is going to be there. But if you actually leave something by, as a matter of fact, even our teachings, one of the things we're supposed to do is leave knowledge that people will benefit from. And guess what? That's exactly what you're doing here. So it is true to that, to your mission and to your intention. And it works. And, and again, it's just something that is valid for everyone watching. Listen, by the way, this is not about being a Muslim or not a Muslim. This is for everyone. Obviously, this talk yeah. show is 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 worldwide, but it's really geared to the, the Moroccan audiences. But it is it is beneficial for everyone watching and listening right now. Ninety nine percent of this will apply to everybody, you know. Uh, and 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 if you're into, you know, I mean, you have some sort of a, a need to learn more. I mean, obviously, we have ML. You can reach out to her. She'll be more than happy to 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 guide you and work with you. Uh, but really, Emma, it's it's amazing. I'm listening to you. Uh, it, it's so exciting. I mean, we only had one hour and we've exceeded it, but, <laughs> but, but you know what? I, I, I didn't want to stop because it's still, it's still good stuff. And there's so much, you know, on it. I mean, we've, we're going to have to do a comeback, you know, we're going to have to do a second session here, a follow-up. Uh, I know your time is, is valuable and That's we're doing me. it literally on the Sunday because we want to make sure that <laughs> we, we got your time here, but, but, you know, so much stuff that, that is valid in, in this little time. And, you know, you, you take one or two pieces of this, you know, episode right here and, and you can just apply them in life. It can change and transform who you are and what you do and yes. the results you're going to get. Yes. Um, so Amel, uh, you know, we've talked in a lot of areas, but like, you know, I mean, Morocco channel behind me, you know, can you, can you just give our Moroccan youth right now, some piece of advice, you know, uh, just like you're giving to a younger self of yours, you know, just, just, just to keep them really um, engaged, you know, for a better future. <laughs> well, I would say to the Moroccan part of me that needed help when, uh, like a few years back, is honor your family, honor your mother that is very Baldia, honor your father and his family that are very Baldian, wherever you are in the world as Moroccans, um, because there are so many gifts. And being able to understand our boundaries and how to apply them is also a gift. And I, uh, honestly, that is, it's a fresh one because I just came back from my family and I love those moments. And it also is filled with keys for me. And one of them was really welcome them as they are with the gold they are, with the wisdom they are. And to my Moroccan fillers out there, sometimes... I'm going to word it for myself, take if it resonate. Sometimes I thought that my American, my French, my British friends knew better because the system kind of was intricately written in me, in my coding. I, I thought that this was always better, that they knew better, forgetting the wisdom I was from. <laughs> so very important when I talked about the little piece of sand, um, I thought of Morocco and <laughs> we are a tribe of wisdom 
Let's honor it, welcome it. The world learned from us after the earthquake. The word heartful came from that space, to be honest, Hisham. Yes. Nice. I replaced <laughs> mindfulness by heartfulness, thinking of Lumuima, my grandma. <laughs> because Lumuima moves, is always a beautiful. Yep. Yes. She moves from an open heart. And sometimes, because I told you I'm hybrid, this Western part, sometimes I blinded myself because I did that to the wisdom that was in my family, to the love that was circulating that was not able to read as love. And... So to my fellow Moroccans is literally go to your family, go to your mother and father or closest family you have, hug them, love them, say that you love them and allow yourself to the, receive the wisdom that they are. Because you can say whatever you want to your children or, well, I'm not a mother yet, but to your, let's say if my parents were speaking to me, it's what they are being that speaks to me the most. And is the same. We can say whatever we want as coaches it's who we are that is shifting the timelines. So this is why I'm so focused on being. And this is what I would say to my Moroccan fellows. <laughs> well, well, it's funny, Emma, you know, that you said that because we we always heard this expression, you know, the people, yeah. the ancient people say, <laughs> or the, the elders stated this. And we used to take that for granted. When I was a kid, safe to like, whatever, this is a, you know, yes. a bunch of, of hoax stuff, you know. Yes. Only when you get gain some wisdom in life, then you're like, well, that's what that meant. And then it's like you realize like all these, uh, you know, sayings and proverbs and, and you know, teachings that we've, we've you know, from grandparents that they, they used to say yes. things that we did not pay mind to. It's like, you know, that's all antiquated. You know, what yes. does that mean? Yes. And by the way, this applies to all cultures, but in our culture, it's big. I mean, you know, yeah, we have so much riddles <laughs> and, and proverbs and sayings, you know, that are like ancient that we, because remember those people, there's a, a potential of these people were not literate and therefore they use these, these analogies or these, these kind of proverbs to kind of sustain that information yeah. generation over generation. Of course, we got into this modern world now and we feel that, you know, that's all like, you know, not needed, but then you get to a point like, Oh, wow. That's what that meant. You know, and it's amazing, right? So folks out there, you know, all our Moroccan youth and anybody out there, if you have an ancestry and a background in your heritage, you know, you want to take some of those uh, wisdoms, you know, for real and, 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 and take it for, don't take them for granted. They, they have value and, and appreciate it. And you can apply that value on a day-to-day -day basis. You modernize it. Like that's it. That's what you have to do. But there is a yes. place in it. It doesn't go away. It's not antiquated. It's not old fashioned. Yes. You know? You said this appreciation is so true, Sham, because money is an appreciation game. We were talking about money because I always have money as well as a focus because people come to me because they want to heal their relationship with money. And we focus on that, but it also is a reflection of themselves and how the energy is moving, right? Appreciation, appreciating more, saying thank you more is so important, rather in a physical realm to people, right? but also in a spiritual or in the invisible world. And invisible means le un, l'unité qui devient visible. Invisible in French means the one that becomes visible. It's the oneness that becomes visible, right? <laughs> yeah, so, that's another one of those, right? Yeah. Yes. Ownership, <laughs> right? So, so one visible, I like it. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, because in English it's invisible. It doesn't sound that's right, but in French, invisible. Yes. So, uh, visible, I love it. I love exactly. it. See, exactly. see, that, that, that's another thing. Like, th those languages do have a play. I mean, Yes. which people don't appreciate talking about appreciation people sometimes yes. don't value like the diversity of language skills that someone has gives you different learnings from different you know angles yes. every different language has own value yeah and it, it, it's more Absolutely. than when you know one it's it's just amazing how you know like just one word makes a difference in yes. the way you can paraphrase it in french versus in english right exactly uh, so. and in arabic arabic is a powerful language it's a very old language and it's a powerful language as well. So connecting with it with your heart is important too. And this is also why I remember when I lived in London, people were putting the Holy Quran, and people were listening to it, and they were not speaking Arabic. And you know something funny, Hisham, with one of, uh, like with a few of my clients, what I do, I do have the name of my uh, programs are written in Arabic, right? So Al-Amana and Taqwa, when I have clients that hesitate between the two, and I'm like, which level of consciousness are they at, right? 
I love this, Hisham. So I have them written. And even when you see them online, this is my handwriting, right? And they look at it. And when they don't speak Arabic or cannot read Arabic, they actually choose and how they feel when they see it. I literally show it on my tablet. I'll be like, is that this one or this one more? And they go, oh, I feel this one more. And this is the program they go on, right? So whether you speak it or not, it will speak to your heart. Whether you have the same code, religion is just a simple code in movement, okay? Whether you have the same code or not, it speaks to your heart. This is why when people, because I posted Jil Quran Al-Karim on, online, and some people that are not even Arabic speakers or Muslim or don't know even, don't know what the Holy Quran is, they will listen and be like, what is that? What just happened? And I remember when I say, speak your truth, I say it again, it's so important because people that were following me on Facebook this year, the biggest move I made, the most courageous and brave move that I made was to actually share it to Quran and him online. I didn't dare doing it before. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> only my Muslim client knew about it, right? And this year I was like, it's all right, Amal, speak it up. You want your coach to aggro herself as well or aggro himself as well. So that's the same game. And what was happening is that a few people that knew me on Facebook, where I'm a lot less now, uh, and when they saw me on Instagram or TikTok, TikTok had the had the exclusivity of it, right? <laughs> when they saw me on TikTok, they were like, oh, Amel, I feel like I really met you more. Even though you spoke a language, I had no clue what it means. And you know what? Again, the first time I went live, the I did a 31 days live channel um, challenge. Sorry, so I was live every night, and it was during the holy month of Ramadan. I decided that this was the moment, and I was like, before that, no one knew me on live, no one ever saw me on live. I never did any live. So first, I'm like, oh, me, me. <laughs> right? <laughs> then I don't care. I was like, let's just do it. And during those moments, my lives were in English, right? And women were showing up every single night. I'm talking 40, 50 women, right? Every single night. Connecting to the live, saying, Mel, I don't speak English. I have no clue what you're saying. I speak French. <laughs> but I'm here every single night. Because the way you speak, the way you move, your voice does something. And it's not about giving as if it's something I'm taking away from me to the other. It's about activating. I do activate more peace in people's lives. Shall they allow it? That's the same game beyond the language. Well, you know, it's amazing you said that because there have been studies, uh, actually little studies, that they actually, uh, and even there have been social experiments in the streets where people were given to listen to the Quran. And, uh, you know, because it, it is recited and, and it sounds, you know, like if you don't, it sounds that just mystical, but but it's really, it's, I mean, for us, it's the word of God. And and when you listen to it, you know, if you understand it, that's one thing. But even if you don't understand it, they have actually done studies when they looked at wave, like brain yeah. waves yeah. And, and emotional <laughs> stuff. And they saw that the heart, you know, rhythms are cooler and calmer. They had the brain waves that actually, yeah. you know, settle in. So these are not, by the way, we're not saying this. This is not a religious, you know, talk show. But but no. the idea is 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 to this is a fact that actually you can Google it up, you can search for this. These are real things. And we do have actually an actual practice that when you feel tight, listen to the Quran or listen to the recitation. It will or even say dick, meaning that you can say some of those verses yourself and it will actually come to you. It works for me all the time, and I'm sure it works for you, man. And, and it works for everyone that knows how to upper, you know, practice this. And even for non, you know, Muslims, you know, they've actually, we've had people, as a matter of fact, I, I don't know why, but I have this on, on TikTok more recently. People are popping up, you know, that they say, I'm just listening to the Quran right now. And I'm like, these are not yeah. Muslims. I'm not sure why it's happening, you know, but but it is happening more. Find a way. Yeah, it's find a way to connect to the divine. Some people will connect to it through nature because to something that has no agenda. Nature, if you're walking outside, nature doesn't have an agenda against you. It's just present. That's it. Well, well nature is part of the divine, right? It's it's, it's creation. Yes. Well, I'm <laughs> so, telling you, it's just a different <laughs> language to connect to it. It's a, well, depending on your nervous system and your belief system. Even when you say, I don't believe in anything, you do have a belief system. It's the same. Well, well you know, Emma, it's funny because yes. if, you, if anyone takes the time to ponder and wonder in nature, they will ultimately 
find a way, you know, to divide. <laughs> because, yeah. because you know, you cannot possibly look at this vast universe and the galaxies and the stars and the creation around us, and it doesn't mesmerize you. If you just at sea or somewhere looking at nature, you will probably feel like, wow. And when you do well, you start wondering, like, well, how did it all come to be? Yes. It's not. It, it yeah. might. I, I, I'd hate to say this. It's, it cannot be a coincidence. Although there is some some schools of thought that says it happened by chance. You know, yeah. I, I yeah. say this. Nothing happens by chance. There's no coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. Everything has a design. Even we have the concept of intelligent design. You know, therefore introducing the idea of an intelligence and a designer. Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, we can debate all these things. I mean, that's a whole show on its own. We can have that discussion as well <laughs> some other time. Yeah. But really, it, it's amazing that, you know, and, and, and by the way, Emma, thank you so much for, for the words that you stated, you know, today and uh, the advice. I do want to, you know, I know we've exceeded the time, but who cares, right? I want to <laughs> ask you one thing. I know you got to go, but um, for, again, for the youth of, of Morocco, in terms of business and prosperity, what would you tell them? Because, you know, you did, you know, literally state something powerful that money is always a play. And and although money is not real, and that is a fact too, you know, it's the it, the value of, of what you get, you know, it's not necessarily in those dollar bills. It's really more than that. It's transactional. It's it's how you make it better. But you're right. I mean, the, if we look financially speaking, the dollar itself has no value because there's no gold against it. It's just, they print more numbers and yes. it's digital. And yes. soon enough, we're talking about, even I think in Europe, they, they approved some digital currency yes. that's going to be in, yes. in place. So so at the end of the day, there will be a point where we're not going to have papers and stuff. It's going to be like, you know, what you're worth in credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you so know. Actually, uh, um, money, sorry, Hisham, because it's really important. The money is not a value holder. This is what you will have like if you're just saving it 20 years down the line, that money is not worth what it was worth before. It's not holding the value. Yeah, and it's gold. the same trend in, yes, it's <laughs> the same trend in, in business as well. Okay. Business doesn't hold your value. So important to take that in because some people would, and I was, I had a phase like this as well. I'll be like, oh, I'm making that much money. Oh, la, la, I'm important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, so the first came up there. <laughs> Ooh la la, wait, wait. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Same thing, you know. And I would, I would think to myself, uh, oh, mon dieu. And I got poor in my life at some point, trying to look rich. <laughs> so before, that, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. Yeah, that was you, good. <laughs> you you, you got to hold that. Say it one more time. I got poor at a moment while I was trying yeah. to look rich. You know, that's yeah. happening to a lot of us. By trying to look rich in my life. Yeah. Can, so can we got, give an example of that? Like, you know, buying a nice yes. expensive bag, you know, to try to, to, to emulate, it's you know, someone. Is beyond the, it's beyond the lifestyle. Okay, I'll give you a clear example. I was, so I'm a coach and I'm serving as well, right? Some of my clients are also coaches. But I would hire the most expensive coach ever. And part of my decision in actually paying that coach that level, I was like, oh, it's making me feel so smart and important and valuable and all of that. I forgot that I was love itself. I got lost in running for the sake of running. And I was in amazing masterminds, but I didn't take the time to listen to the silence. There is no music without silence, by the way. Take the time to listen to the silence and how aligned and tuned in you are. This is why I open those private moments with my clients, because this is a moment to listen to the silence. This is the moment. Once you get into the Zoom with me, this is a moment for you. It's not for your children. It's not for your husband. It's not for your business. It's not for your employees. It's not for the XYZ emails you have going on. It's for you to get aligned because you can do so many actions, right? But the most important one is the inspired actions, the ones that are aligned with your vision, because this is fulfilling. This is what people are looking for, feeling fulfilled. All right. And it's not for I'm so outside, outside, outside. This is why I'm like, it's tailored to you. We go and find it inside. I'm a coach and I love saying DM me the key emoji. I love the key emoji because <laughs> the key emoji, if you're watching this and you want to work with me and you're like, I want to be served by her and you want to know more, DM me the key emoji because the keys are inside of you. I help you see it, hear it, welcome it. I love this. And it is something I am day in, day out. <laughs> you know, it, it, it becomes so natural at some point. It's like when you learn driving. At first, you're like, oh, la, la. and I took ages to drive, guys. But <laughs> my point is that I was struggling at first. At first, in the US, you have the automatic one. Here, we like to gear it. 
All right, première, deuxième, troisième. Uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> But you get used to it. You know, I love yeah, the energy. So it's the same thing. The two things I want to share here is when you are learning, it's hard at first. So you said give advice to the youth, Moroccan youth, and the youth around that is watching us. The first thing I would say is do it. 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 Just do it. Okay? Thank you, baby. <laughs> yes. Get it going on. Get it going on. Because if you are in your head trying to optimize how it would be, right, do it first. Any business, you, like Google is in beta version. Okay, same game. Any business gets to launch it, then optimize it. Launch it, then optimize it. Same game. But you are like a, crossing a bridge even though you're not there, right? Important part, first, do it. I was talking about engine. This is so important. Because if you're putting orange juice in your 4x4 that needs gasolina, your engine is bound to die. And it's the same in your business, okay? If you're feeding it thoughts that are saying, I am not enough, I can do this, I only bad stuff happened to me. How can I get out of this? I cannot see what I can learn from this. You need someone that can help you translate, like a decoder, right? It's like, how can I get out of that roundabout and take an exit because emotions need to circulate and get out i'm literally i specialize on that part it's emotional intelligence when people ask me what do you use emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence tools same game so stop putting orange juice in your magnificent car because it needs gasolina okay it needs <laughs> it needs more it needs, <laughs> it needs more and if you are going electric same game okay be aware of what you're putting in spiritually, energetically, because this is giving you the fuel. Either you're in for a season, and if you are in for the legacy, you get to meet me. So you get to put sustainable fuel in there. It's so important. It's so important. Uh, because uh, that's powerful. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 I love what you say. I mean, you speak my language. I mean, uh, yeah. you, you, if you listen to any of my shows, this is <laughs> exactly, I, I talk about exactly the same. And, uh, But but I actually as I have a saying: the only way to do it is by doing it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds corny, but but it's really as simple as that. You got to do it. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 most people, that's the thing. And I thank you for. By the way, that shows that you're a super, as I said, super coach. Because I I asked that question a while ago, and we went all the way, and you came back to it. Not a lot of people have that talent to be able to catch that. And you know, sometimes they get, you know, so distracted and they forget about it. You came right to the point. So you, you saved me the, the, the turn back there. But, but really, a trainer, a coach will do that well. And then, you know, yeah. and, and uh, an experienced <laughs> one will do that, like, with grace, as you did. But, but so, frankly, so that's really the, the point. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of things. We talk about stuff. Talk is cheap, right? You know, we have a, a stay and talk, you know, uh, uh, talk the talk and walk the walk. The walk yeah. is everything, right? You know, we yeah. can blah, 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 blah. You know, like, you know, like sometimes people like look at me like they they tell me like, you're crazy. I, I am not crazy. I know where I am. If you start, if you go back four years and see what I started where I'm today, then you start seeing a little bit of my vision. Not all of it. You're going to see a portion of how it is coming to play. And yes. when I started, I knew what I wanted and I'm doing it and I keep doing it and I'm all over the place. I'm like, you're all over I mean, Glamour, I mean, Broggins Channel, I mean, this, I'm doing this. Don't worry about it. I know exactly what that, that picture is going to look like, you know, and a good point. But you know what? I, I'm not waiting for something specific to happen. I'm doing it all at once. Yes. I'm doing different things, whatever it takes to get it done. And, you know, it's happening, folks. And this is why we're doing this is to teach you guys or to give you a, a platform to realize we're not very different we're not special we're just doing it <laughs> you know doing we live in our dreams and doing our you know working towards our dreams anyone watching and listening right now i don't i mean again we we talked more about the moroccan and a little bit of the islamic stuff today but it doesn't matter what your background is it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in these things can apply to everyone anytime anywhere uh, and you just and you can just tweak them according to your own you know note of belief and that's all there is so it is happening It can happen. It will happen. But again, you said it. If you keep giving the bad, you know, the orange juice in your nice Lamborghini, that Lamborghini is going to, you know, and that's it. Yes. Or you can give it the nice, you know, premium stuff and that thing is going to fly. So your choice. And I, I chose Lamborghini for a reason because it's expensive, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. yes. No, I love how you said it. Expansive. Expansive is with the A and with the E, both. 
energy is expensive. This is why wealthy people will be very protective of energy. This is why when I literally speak about spiritual spaces and I explain that it is intimate spaces and private spaces, because I can help the one that is starting, but already have the right mind for it, right? And the person that is a high income earner, because that energy is expansive with the A and the E, same game. And the other thing I want to share here, Hisham, because I really appreciate this time that we had together. And I can understand that some can connect. I can understand that the majority is also Muslim listening as an audience and receiving as well. Um, you, I have a special emoji from my Muslim printers that they can send to me. This will literally say that they also want to receive, my team can understand it as soon as they receive it. They want to receive Tajweed of the Holy Quran included uh, in the business coaching session. And this is the masjid emoji. So if you type Mecca in the emoji, that will appear. And this is important to know because I had a part where I was looking for a business owner that can hold that space as well with me because we are space holders when we help another person. When you said earlier, Emel, the fact that you came back to that question is showing a skill set. This is what is happening. We get to be deep listeners and it's it's really important. And this is the link with silence. Silence is important. So what I want as well out of this moment together is for the audience to have takeaways with them. The first one is gratitude. The second is listen to the silence. Get to listen to the silence because if the silence is being awkward for you this means there is something there is like a little sandy thing going on right <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same thing here get to listen to the silence in your day right because you get to listen to your heart third thing i want to share is literally put your hand on your heart directly and get to feel the bits of your heart yes because every single heartbeat is actually a blessing on its own and we tend to forgive it, like to forget it, forgive it, Ooh, to forget it, right? It's the same game. Get to remember how you are showered with blessings at every single heartbeat. This changes your entire emotional system, your entire nervous system. And we get to work on that. You know, it's so important. And it might seem like, you don't need money for it, okay? You, you do this and you get to feel it. You don't need to be rich for this. Okay, so if you go, oh, I'm going to wait until I have the money. I was like this. I'm not mocking you. I was literally like this. <laughs> I'm going to wait until I have the money to launch the, the, the thing, right? Because you're talking about young Moroccans that have an idea. I want to give it a go. When we said to them, just do it, right? This point is important. You don't need stuff to do it. You're like, oh, I'm going to need this until I do it. I'm going to need this until I do it. Get to do it because there are so many things you don't need money to get to it. Same thing. Get to connect and ask if you're also a Muslim preneur or you are someone that believes in God. All right. And this higher energy. Get to ask the divine because when you get aligned with yourself, you receive your allies on the road. Because sometimes you're not aligned. Literally, you're not aligned within. Your allies are around, but you cannot see them. I, I, listen, I, I can... Well, first of all, th this this is weird, right? It, it felt like we had... A, 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 like, you know, when you feel like my wife does the... the the gym stuff and at the end of the class she does a stretching and a, like you know oh, just a, rela a relaxing moment so this is what we just did <laughs> it was like like the unwinding part of the show right like the little deep right you know that the breathing you know exercise but yes. it was good but really it, it's powerful because again you're right i mean if you, if you are really first of all you're right when you every heartbeat you got to be grateful for because you're still breathing <laughs> you're still breathing you're still alive and that's a blessing in its own because some people may not have that luxury any longer right you know so that's one so and that goes for everything that we have in life if you breathe i mean think about pandemic recently people were dying because they couldn't breathe right you know sadly and just think about that each breath that you have is like a blessing enjoy it you know and everything in our life in a journey is a blessing again grat gratitude we just had thanksgiving in the states which again there are debates about that holiday because of the the history behind it 
But the yes. concept of being yes. grateful and thankful, you know, is something not necessarily attached to one holiday. It should be every day, yes. every moment. And, and you know, like I make a joke, like we, we have a Father's Day. I mean, Father's Day is every day. We have a Mother's Day. It should be every day. We have a, a love day, a Valentine's Day. It, love should be every day, you know. So, you know, it's not, we not, we don't have to wait for certain days to be able to appreciate, uh, you know, things that we have with people around us. We need to be thankful on a day-to-day basis to everything. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you breathe, you're healthy, you're safe, you should be grateful. You know, you have... Uh, like this talk show, I'm grateful for it. I mean, the, this moment, you, you know, we spent almost two hours, but guess what? This is not a waste of two hours. Uh, you know, like I always make the joke about this, and I, you probably heard me saying this. This is my, I'm the client. I'm number one client of my shows because I get them first. I get all the, to absorb that energy and get some of this, and it keeps me, you know, running. But again, this is exactly what you said, Namal. This is not a coincidence. It's happening for a reason. You know, we connected for a reason. This is happening today specifically for a reason. Uh, it yeah. is meant to teach someone that it could happen. I love what you said. You know, not to wait. You got to start somewhere. Things will manifest. Believe me, you just have to start going. Every journey starts with one step. That's it. You got to step in. It's already literally the timeline is already on. Uh, and also, if a person is already listening to this show, they're already connecting to that new version of them that actually launched it already. They're already looking at several business coaches that can help them. They are already meeting, you know, the allies, whether I'm the person that worked with them or someone else. They are meeting a person that serves business owners to where they want to be at, right? It's the same game. Everything that you put in movement is actually serving you. So I'm really happy I could actually share this as well. The fact that you, it's written Morocco and you have the, you know, like all the background. I swear to, it does something to my heart. Like, <laughs> I just get like, I love this. I would have loved to see that when I just started and before my first ever business, because I had several business over time. And I told you that as well when I met you, Hisham, like the, the fact that in you, in your being, you in your journey was already inspiring me so much because it gives us different timelines. It's the same way you're listening to the radio or TV. When you change channels, the other one doesn't stop. It's the same game, literally the same game going on here. The timeline you want to experience is on right now. All the lines has been created by Allah Zawajal. They all exist, or God, or the divine, or the almighty, well, or the universe. You, you go into the multiverse and all existence. And yes. by the way, you did say something that was very powerful earlier that maybe people didn't catch it, but time is relative. Yes. It's not what we think. It's a creation. We, 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 we all know relative time of Albert Einstein, right? So so that and that and the reason that exists because it is real, it is happening, past, present, future, or existing yes. somewhere in the realm of the divine. And also for us, the moment is the only thing. You're living today. This moment no. is here. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. The past is gone. And a lot of people actually stress because of the past and stress because of the future. They have, you know, like one is depression, one is anxiety. Your anxiety about the future and depression about the past. None of them do exist. You have to have to live the yeah. moment, be happy. This moment yeah, is really what's all there is. Today. They're just yeah. taking away the piece of today. So you get to enjoy what you are experiencing right now. And if you want to feel something, you don't need to have the money in order to feel it. You can activate it within you in the now. I love this moment with you, Hisham. Thank well, you I, so much for giving no, us the ability to share. No, thank you. I, and you know what? We were supposed to be an hour. It's an hour forty five minutes right now. But <laughs> you, know, you know, and we still gotta probably do another one, but but it was worth every single split second here. You know, I think a lot of information that's been shared. We were live actually on my in, in Instagram feed right now, just they listen to you and watch me on my green screen. But they will see they will see the real show coming up, you know, with you being, you know, because it's one thing to hear her and the other thing is to see her. And when you're gonna <laughs> see her, you'll be like, Whoa, this was a whole different, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, because it's it's amazing the listening and the, we try to give the best in terms of like the vocals and the sound yeah. and the, the energy, Excellent. but it doesn't when you have the visual and audio, it's a whole different world. So you'll have a 4D experience here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm at, thank you so much for being with us. You know, it's been so so fun, so great, so informative, informational, informative. I mean, I don't know what the joke is <laughs> and, and and words I'm gonna use, but it's all good. It's just you know a fantastic you know journey here for the last uh, almost two hours. Uh, but you know what? This is another thing that I always stress on. You know, 
I, I've always wanted to build a program where there is no confines of time and space. Like, you know, many programs, they cut, you know, on the hour mark, whatever you crunch in. For me, if the flow is right, the energy is right, we keep going and, and we can literally run it for another hour. But I know you, your time is also valuable and you have things to do. Uh, but, but you know, um, I wanted to really thank you personally, you know, for, for joining, for being with us, for giving so much great stuff here. And folks, you know, for those of you who are watching currently, thank you for joining and at least watching and listening right now. But stay tuned for the real, you know, replay of this live, you know, with Emma being visually, you know, available to you. Uh, and so that's about it. Um, folks, this is, yeah. you know, the Morocco Channel, Talented Morocco Worldwide with Emma uh, uh, all the way from France, the city of Bordeaux, beautiful city. Um, and you, you, you know, it was fun because you know she threw in some Arabic, she threw in some French. You know, her French came up. The ooh la la, <laughs> you know, it was, it was all good stuff. It was fun. I mean, we had like an entertaining show here. Uh, and uh, you know, again, this is the Morocco Channel. Stay tuned for more episodes and more correct guests of, of Moroccan background around the world. And again, this is not just for the Moroccans, for all of the people, but, you know, certainly we want to help and assist our Moroccan youth and anybody that has an interest in Morocco, of course. Uh, again, the Morocco channel is the uh, first of its kind in terms of uh, a Moroccan channel that is in English speaking only. And it's for the Moroccans and people who are interested in Morocco specifically. Uh, it touches on business, spirituality, and everything else that comes along with it, uh, you know, and uh, it's all there is. So thank you. Amal, have a great one. Yes, you too, Ishan. Thank you so much.